Today on Be Something Wonderful, secret to changing others and the world. Self-concept and everybody is you pushed out. I am your host, Tom Kieran, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. Big video this morning. I want to talk about a session. It was an hour with a client who even said, she goes, Tom, I don't even think I need the session. I just, there's very few people I can talk about this stuff with. And she wanted to really talk about the major changes in her life just in the past year, although she's been on the channel, she said for about a year and a half, two years now. And she goes, it really got it. She goes, something moved within me, right? She, where before she was going back and forth, trying to convince her, her SP or a specific person uh, of, of getting married and all that, they, they're now getting married next year. Where, where she wasn't happy with her job and she was really struggling to make it work, she got a new job where she's very happy. Right, and her, everything's going great with her friend. She goes, she, she's got more money than she's ever had. She goes, it, it just, everything has changed. And, and, I, and she goes, I think it really moved me to a point that I don't really even want anything. It's, it, I, I, I like who I am. I want to really hit this because this came up in another session yesterday as well. But this one, I really unpacked it with her because I wanted her to sort of, so I could do a video about it and really give you some of the, the points that moved within her. Here's what she said, and we're going to cover a lot of it. She said a lot, and again, to summarize it, most of it had to do around self-concept and the idea that everybody is you pushed out. She stopped struggling to influence and change 3D conditions in others. So she stopped banging against uh, not liking her job and, and her life and wanting her, her SP or a specific person to be somebody different or do something different. And she lined up with who she wanted to be. She, decided, she, she made that choice, right? She changed herself, but really, what did she really do? She chose that identity that she wanted to be. So something moved within me. I don't really want anything. I know I am it. She moved to the sense that she knows that she's source now, right? She knows that she determines it as source. She gets to define who she is. And when she defines that who she is, everybody else must play their role, right? The 3D reality must form around that, right? Must rearrange itself around her identity. She really got that. She goes, I am, she's, she's talking about some of the videos and some of the, what were some of the things that moved her? The whole idea, she said, of I am source in the process. Because she was, she goes, early on, I was struggling to change things through processes, right? And now, and, and she goes, what really helped me is some early videos, some three-step videos that I did early on. And I'm going to cover a little bit of that today as well. She goes, that really helped me get started on it. That I realized that I am the process but with that three-step process, right? That is really one step. And the whole idea of everybody is you pushed out in self-concept, the teachings of Neville got it, and, and some of the videos where we hit that. I'm gonna summarize some of this today and really hit it and unpack it in a way that we never have before. She goes, earlier when she needed something to do, that those, that, those videos on the three-step process, which I covered near the end of this video, really helped her. But as she got it, it was really only recently where she got, she moved to this idea that she's source, that she's the process. She stopped working on herself. That's what she said. I stopped working on myself. I, I stopped assuming there's something wrong with me or something wrong with what I'm doing. And I got into the being. She, she started choose, I started choosing my reality and identity. That's big. We're going to hit that today. And it, and it doesn't, and here's a big point she made. It doesn't even mean that stuff didn't come up in 3D. Right on what she would say, what we would call unwanted conditions or contrast or negative things that we would label negative. She goes, I just look at that stuff now as source. I, deter I, I determine who I'm being, and I, I know those conditions must form around that. Right? They might remember the conditions must change around who you're being. So I want to hit all of these ideas today and more. Remember, Neville Goddard said it. 
There's no one to change but self. Your assumptions about yourself and your relationship to the world. That's where the change is made. It's made at the identity level. Remember we talked about the levels of creation. I'll cover a few of those today. Just to, but in the higher level, you determine who you're going to be. And then all of the core assumptions about reality, all of your beliefs and, and, and lower assumptions and, and, and spontaneous thoughts are determined by that. All your feelings and emotions come from that. And then, and then all the actions that you take in 3D reality come from that. Do you see it? So these invisible assumptions within become visible in the people, events, and circumstances of your life experience. This was really the big thing. Remember, that's your experience of reality. Everything you experience are based on your assumptions. Your assumptions of yourself, your identity, and the world others, right? But it's really yourself because that's how the world becomes. But your relationship to it, your relationship to reality. Remember, that's what everyone is you pushed out really means. That it's your assumptions of yourself in the world and your relationship to the world that is reflected out there. That is you pushed out. That's what that means. It doesn't mean everybody is you. But remember, just like a dream. Think about when you wake up from a dream, you go, that felt so real. Well, where did all of the, the, that, that, that thing that was real when you were dreaming it come from? It came from within you, right? And that's what the whole idea of lucid dreaming is become, becoming aware that you're dreaming. And then you have an element of control over the things that you're dreaming about. Well, it's the same thing in 3D reality. You're dreaming this in some ways, right? And when you're unconscious, when you're not creating, when you're not determining who you are, then something else or someone else is. Do you see it? So you get to determine it all. It's your waking dream. It's your reality to create, your identity. Everyone is you pushed out. Your assumptions are pushed out. Who you believe you are and your relationship to the world are pushed out in the events and people events and circumstances. That's what everyone is you pushed out means. So when Neville says there's no one to change but self, Neville Goddard is saying that self is simply your awareness, your awareness of being, your I am awareness, your consciousness in the world in which it lives is determined by your concept you hold of yourself. He gets back to self-concept, or in other words, the identity, how you're identifying as that I am awareness. Who are you? Like we talked about yesterday, what's the story that you're telling, right? Self so remember the levels. I'm going to talk about the top three levels. Right, because the top three levels determine levels four, three, two, and one. Right, remember level seven. This is the ultimate, this is the father, the absolute, this is the Lord or the law of scripture. It's the isness of reality, it's God, that's pure awareness. Right, that's all power, that's the oneness and the unity of reality. This is the ultimate reality right here. It's pure awareness. It's not being aware of anything. It's not being conscious of anything. It just, it's just itself. It just is. It's just the isness. Then there's the first manifestation, call it, of that God, of that Lord, or of that law, of that isness, of that all power. And that's the Son, the Son of God, the I am awareness, consciousness, beingness. Right, that's the infinite power to be anything. In that one, in that isness, in the one of God, I am the Lord and there is no other. I am the law. The Lord, remember, in all capitals in the Old Testament means law. Right? The, the metaphysical meaning of the Lord in all cap in all capital letters in the Old Testament means the Old Testament means law. They're talking about that isness, the great isness of reality, all power. That's why it's not talking about an all-powerful being dictating things. It's talking about all power, period. It just got misinterpreted as an all-powerful being that's directing life. That's all power. The beingness, that infinite power, is the sun. It's the first manifestation. That's the infinite potential to be anything. That's all beingness, all points of consciousness, you, me, and everybody else, billions of points. Then there's the identity the self-concept that Neville Goddard was talking about. Your identity or your, your key assumption of who you are. Who do you say you are? That's why Jesus asked that question to his disciples. It's the ultimate assumption 
of that beingness that can be anything. What are you, who are you? Right? Your ultimate self-concept, your ultimate assumption of, your, of yourself and your relationship to the world determines your entire life experience. That's big. Those are those first five levels. Remember, you've got four would be sort of, level four would be other, would be core assumptions, right? Root assumptions of reality, linear time and, and things like that, of the universe, right? Four, those core assumptions would be level four. And then three would be other like thoughts, right? Other beliefs that you have based on those core assumptions. And then level two would be the thoughts and feelings that are generated by those thoughts and assumptions. And then level one, the lowest level would be the action or the conditions in 3D. All of those levels are one, but it's at the identity in these other levels that you determine your life experience, all of it. I'm gonna send a link to one of the, I've done several videos on levels of creation. I'll do a playlist on it, but I'll, I'll create a link so you can see those levels and review those. Remember what Neville Goddard says, it is to consciousness that we must turn as the one, as the only reality. To consciousness that we must turn. What is that consciousness? That's that I am awareness, being conscious as I am, as I am that awareness. That's that. Remember, what is that? That's the first manifestation of that isness or the law or the Lord of God. This together, I and my Father are one. That's the I, the I am awareness. That's that's that potent, infinite potential to be anything. And, the, and, I and, the, and the Lord, I and the Father are one, the Father being that isness. This is one. That's the great oneness of reality. That's the great I am of reality. Right? So that I and my Father are one. But the Father is greater than I. Meaning all power is greater. All isness. That pure awareness is always greater. Right? It's, it just is. Right? It's the one and only source. The source is greater. The one and only source. First cause is always greater. So turn inward and upward to your I am awareness. That's what that means. The Christ of Scripture. What Neville Goddard was talking about. In Him, we live and we move and we have our being. In what? In that great I amness. In that great beingness. In that great infinite potential to be anything. In, it's infinite power. In that infinite power, we live and we move and we have our being. So what she really got, that it wasn't about changing anything. It wasn't about working on herself. It wasn't about healing anything. It was about choosing. Well, who do you say I am? As Jesus asked his disciples, at the identity level, right? Who do they say I, the Son of Man, am? That's the question. Who do they say I, the Son of Man, your identity as a Son of Man, that self-concept, am? Who do they say I am? That's that I am awareness. You get to define it there, right? The great, I am. Your I am is asking you, right? Your I am awareness. Who do you say you are, right? In other words, who and what are you conscious of being? That's your self-concept. Remember, there's no reality in the world other than your consciousness. Neville got it other than that I am awareness. It's the one and only reality, right? There's no out there, out there. John Wheeler, the scientist, your awareness of being, your I am. Therefore, if that's true, then there's no reality other than your identity on level five, right? There's no reality then, if there's no reality other than your consciousness, other than your awareness of being, other than this beingness, it's infinite potential to be all things, that's one with, with the Father, that's one with that pure awareness, then, then your identity, your self-concept, your assumption of yourself and your relationship to the world must be the only reality. Do you see it? Then there's no other reality than your identity, than your self-concept and your assumptions. That's what the ultimate definition of self-concept in everyone is you pushed out means. There's no reality other than what you define. That, remember, there's the Father, level seven, the Lord of the law, the great I am, the absolute isness. There is no other. I am the Lord and there is no other. I am God and there is no other. That's God. That's the Father. Then the Son of God, the law of being. I am awareness. That's the infinite beingness. That's the law of being. Right? You have the law or the Lord, the law of Scripture. 
Lord in capital letters. The overall, that's the Father, that's the Lord, right? That, that's when Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law, I came to fulfill it. Who came to fulfill it? The Son of God, the law of being, to fulfill that law, that isness of becoming whatever you want to be, that infinite beingness, that I am awareness. Then you have the Son of Man, the law of assumption. This is where the law of assumption comes in. This is where Neville Goddard's teachings come in. I am identity, right? Your identification as that great I am, as that from that law of being, you get to decide what you assume. And what you assume is what you become and what you are, what you experience, right? Level seven is I am the light. I am the Lord. I am the God. I am that pure awareness. Pure awareness is light. And then, and then level six is I am the life. That beingness be, is the life, right? Is that isness becoming potential to be anything, right? And then there's I am the way. There's the son of man, the law of assumption, the identity. That's the door, you, the, who you defend, identify with. As you identify with that I am of scripture, the Christ within you, that becomes your way. The way is what? Through your assumptions, through your identity, through that I am, right? That's why Jesus said, I am the way, I am the light, I am the life, I am the resurrection. You resurrect that new identity within yourself, right? By identifying with it. Remember, and we got into this, right? Because, because she goes, you know, I used to think I was stuck and I get a lot of this, right? They're either stuck with, so they always, they, I get a lot of sessions where they say I'm stuck or I'm blocked by some beliefs or I'm sabotaged by some limiting beliefs or assumptions. And I, I just want to say, and you know this, you're not stuck, you're not blocked, and you're not sabotaged, right? You're source. And so, but, but there's no way out, out there. So when you say you're stuck, when you say you're blocked, when you say you're sabotaged by your beliefs and assumptions, you're looking out there in conditions. Those conditions could be physical conditions, 3D reality, people, events, and circumstances, but they can also be inner conditions of changing in temporary thoughts and the feelings about those thoughts. And you believe that those are sabotaging or, you're, or what you believe are subconscious beliefs that are sabotaging you. None of that's true because when you stop looking out there and, and know that there's only one way, I am the way, go through that door then that, that's the, that, those are the high, that, that's the levels five, six, and seven of reality creation. Not these lower levels of four, three, two, and one, right? Of your core assumptions, your, your, assumptions, your assumptions and thoughts about those core assumptions, then your thoughts and feelings, and then action. All of that gets determined by your identity. There's only one way. All scripts are written, right? So stop resisting. Stop trying to change and influence those conditions and flip thoughts and flip feelings. Those scripts are written. Those continue. So choose, don't change, right? You might be able to move. And again, in terms of conditions, right? Those people, events, and circumstances, including your SP and people that things that you want in your life, you might be able to move effects and conditions around, right? You might be able to think, affirm, assume, and imagine certain things different within any given script. Right? So you're, you're living out some script in your reality and you want to make changes and you're able to make changes on those lower levels by thinking and affirming and imagining and even you believe manifesting certain things. But it seems hot and cold. It doesn't seem to lead you to what you want. It seem, you seem to be there, but you're not there. Why? Because the script that you're trying to change doesn't change in that alternative space. It doesn't change in that higher reality. It's written. It's not going to change. So, I, so if you, unless you pick a different script, a different identity, a different version of you, no matter what surface changes you make but with affirmations or even imagining your wish fulfilled or, or, any, or any thoughts and fi by flipping thoughts and feelings, you might, get, you might see some movement, but you're, not ch you're still on the same script. That's why you feel like you're stuck. That's why you feel like you're blocked. That's why you feel like you're sabotaged. Because the script's written. But, but there are infinite scripts in that beingness of God. In that beingness of I am, there are infinite scripts to choose from. 
So you're not stuck in any one script. You're not stuck in any one identity. You're not being sabotaged by anything other than trying to change and move effects around in that, in that same script, holding on to the same story, the same script, the same reality, imagining within that script, thinking within that script, trying to affirm within that script. That's, what, that's why you think you get exhausted. It's not the affirming that's bad. It's not the imagining. Repetition is great. So it's not the repetition that's exhausting you. It's you're doing it within a script that can't be changed. Repeat it by, by, by moving to your new reality. Then that repetition will feel empowering. It will feel exhilarating. It will feel like you're moving, right? Just like she had. I met, this is some of the comments I get. I manifested, that, I manifested him back or her back three times and then I lost them again. Or I manifested money over and over again, but I'm still broke. Or I feel better about my health. I, 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 I'm, I'm recovering or healing, but then it reoccurs and it comes back. All of that is because it's the same script. It's the same identity. You're trying to move things around, imagine and heal and fix things within that same script that's already written that can't be changed. That's what fate means. That's what destiny means. But, but you're not fated or destined for any one script. But within that script, it's written. So there is a fate there. There is a destiny. But you get to choose among infinite scripts, infinite realities, infinite versions of yourself, what you want your fate and destiny, destiny to be now. Do you see it? It's only fixed within a certain script. That's why you feel like you're blocked. So let's hit this a little bit more. What do I do? Well, do nothing, right? This is what she got. She got that idea. Be the identity and version of you for and through whom that reality is real. And I really want to make a point because what really changed with her and her, what she was feeling and some other kinds of feeling is the naturalness of the state, the embodiment of, that, of being that person for a home and through whom that reality is real. It's the naturalness is the feeling of wish fulfilled. Do you see it? That conviction is natural to you. That I am conviction is natural to you. It's in his name or nature. What is his name? The name of Jesus is I am. So when, whenever you hear a lot of preachers going, and in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name or in the nature of what? What's Jesus Christ? That's your I am. That's the I am of scripture. I am that I am, right? That's what God was saying to Moses. I am that I am. I am the I am where all things come from. The, the, the first source, right? Feeling it real means feeling it natural. That's what we mean. It's not a necessarily a temporary uh, can, uh, thought or feeling of being joyful, although that's good and you will feel joyful and excited more and more. But it's not those temporary feelings that, that seem to come and go. It's a, it's a natural state of being. It's a natural conviction. That's the feeling of wish fulfilled, right? And, and Neville talks about feeling in several ways. Yes, he talks about it in an imaginal act, about actually feeling or touching or, or hearing that, that scene or reality, put yourself in the scene. But bigger than that, fulfillment is natural to you. It's in the name or nature of your I am in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Christ, the son of the living God, in the name of that I am. It's feeling it real means feeling it natural. You change the world only when you become the embodiment of that, of that you want the world to be. You embody that. In other words, you identify, with who, you identify as that reality. Then the world changes. Then your SP, the specific person changes. Then your friends change. Then everything changes around you because you are that reality, right? You are the process. You are the way. You are the life, right? You are, I am the resurrection. I am the way. I am the life. The process means you resurrect it within right? It's the way. I think some of you were playing with that and say, I get my way because I am the way, right? Of course, or everything goes my way because I am the way. Exactly. I am the life. You are all of that. So I want to talk about this because she talked about early on these three steps. I want to hit this, but just to know that you are this process. It's only one step as I've covered in many videos. But I always, I talked to several videos about the AAA, three steps, 
right, to imagining. So some of you say, well, Tom doesn't talk a lot about process. I actually do. And there's a lot of early videos where we unpack a state akin to sleep. We unpack imagining in the alpha state. We unpack meditations. We had, we had, all of that are in the oh, more than 1,400 videos on the channel. And there'll be more on that. But I want to talk about this. What is step one or the one step? Assume it, affirm it, and allow it. Step one, affirm, assume it. In other words, choose, don't change. Right? Don't try to change a script that's written. Don't try to change others. Don't try to change the world. Assume that you are that person you want to be. Assume that that reality exists right now. Who do you say I am? That's what Jesus was saying. And then go to the end of that assumption and stay there. That it's done, that it's yours. And then affirm it. This is where, this is where you would have a process come in. But remember, you are the process. So these steps are all happening at once. They're all, they're all simultaneous. Affirm it. Imagine it. Receive it and perceive it within. It's within. That frame is your only reality. Whatever you're creating, remember, you might receive the image, you might imagine the image, you might see the scene, you might just affirm it, but that image is within you. You are that process. And then more importantly, probably the most important is allow it. Remember, conditions are conditions, but I am. Allow all conditions to be there. Accept it all as part of creation, as a part of infinity, as part of God. And then choose. Right? It doesn't mean you agree with them. It means you allow it. Because all conditions, as I've pointed out many times, remember, all conditions are leading you to what you want. All conditions are part of the bridge of incidents or the path of least resistance to what you want. All conditions are made of the same substance. All your desire is unfolding in 3D reality, so those conditions represent your desire unfolding. All of them must be, no matter how contrary they are. When you go to the assumption and you, and you declare it and, and affirm it, right? Fulfillment's the only reality, right? All conditions are the bridge of incidents. All conditions are the path to your desire. It's all unfolding now. So, those, so even the signs that you are seeing, right? All of those are signs that the, that reality is unfolding right now, that you are that version of yourself. So assume it, affirm it, and then allow it. Right? That's the process, and it's one step within. How? By identifying who you want to be, embodying that at that level, then everything else must unfold. Right? See, that's the secret to changing others and the world. Self-concept and everybody is you pushed out. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Thank you for being part of our, our Facebook group, the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful. For joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen. For joining our membership channel. Thank you if you're a member. If you want to be a member, join us. We have uh, con lots of content on that channel. More content coming out. There was a video released a few days ago over the weekend on the channel, it was big. There's also a live stream coming on the membership channel. It'll be available to you on August 6, 2023, live right here in the studios in Las Vegas. I'm gonna be coming to you live at nine in the morning, Sunday morning, August 6. I'm gonna be answering questions that you're sending me to info at besomethingwonderful.com. So I'm still, still can continue to keep your questions coming. And um, just creators, thank you for being here. And there'll be more coming. This is Tom Karen with great love, with great light and infinite gratitude from here in the studios of Be Something Wonderful in Las Vegas. We'll see you soon.